What's up everybody, it's Nerp here, and today I'll be showing you my top 10 growth scrolls. I am frequently asked about my opinions on certain scrolls and what cards I use in my deck because apparently people think I'm good at the game, so I'm going to have a video like this one for all four factions, starting with growth. I ranked all of the growth scrolls on their value in general. That doesn't mean how powerful or game changing a scroll is, but rather how strong it is for its cost to play. I'm sure everyone would rather have a Kinfolk Yarl on their side of the board rather than a Kinfolk Brave, but once you factor in the 7th growth it costs to play a Yarl versus the mere 2 cost to play a Brave, you can say that the Brave has more value as a scroll. These lists are all about bang for your buck and that means that many spells, enchantments, and structures will also be featured in the rankings along with the powerful creatures as long as they are very strong. Growth is a faction that overwhelms the opponent with little creatures spawning faster than he can get rid of them. Powerful spells are able to get its creatures attacking more often and harder. This very aggressive faction is even able to stay in the game and make impressive comebacks using a few very powerful spells. I always recommend this faction for new players because I think that it is the, e it is the easiest and simplest to play, but also very strong. That's enough of me rambling, so let's get on with my list of the top 10 growth scrolls. Number 10 The Ragged Wolf is a 1 cost growth creature with 1 attack, 2 countdown, and 2 health. Its main power lies in its ability called Haste. This means that when you place it onto the battlefield, it starts with a 0 countdown. That means that it will attack straight away and your opponent will not have any time to react. Number nine. Many of you may be surprised that I ranked the Great Wolf all the way at number 9. It is a staple of almost every growth deck, so you'd think it would be much higher, but nonetheless it is still a very powerful creature. It is for 5 growth, and it is a 3 attack, 2 countdown, 5 health creature. It is relentless, which means that after it uh, attacks the unit, if it has leftover attack, it will keep going on the next unit or the Nidal, and, it's, and it has a uh, ability that Great Wolf gets plus one attack for every other wolf you control. This means that if you have Ragged Wolves on the board, Mangy Wolves on the board, your Great Wolf will just get a higher attack, and with that relentless damage, it becomes unstoppable. So this guy is a major threat of the board, and a big damning curse violent dispersal target for your opponent. Number the Kinfolk Brave is a 2 cost, 2 attack, 1 countdown, 2 health creature. It is regarded as one of the very best low cost creatures in the game because of that 1 countdown. That means that he will attack every single turn. Having 2 attack attacking every single turn puts tremendous board presence in the early game and also, if left unchecked, can do a lot of damage. This guy uh, a turn 2 brave often can mean the win or loss for a growth player, so he has a tremendous impact if played early in the game. He's pretty easy to kill at only 2 health, but 2 attack attacking every single turn is a threat your opponent has to dispose of. Number seven. The Sister of the Owl is a 6 cost growth scroll that is a creature that has 2 attack, 2 countdown, and 4 health. When it spawns into the game, uh, two owls are spawned on two random adjacent spaces to it. So it gives you three creatures for one scroll. The two owls are one attack, two countdown, one health creatures. And if one of the if an owl dies on the board on your side, your sister the owl will gain one health. And if it if your owl deals damage or it attacks. Uh, your owl, your sister, the owl's attack will increase by one. If you get these, if you get these guys to keep attacking, then your sister, the owl, will eventually be uh, much better than the two four creatures she started out with. And just the fact of, of getting three creatures for one scroll is very good. Number six. Rat King is a four cost growth spell that summons 
a beast rat on target tile, and two adjacent random tiles. A beast rat is a 1-2-2 two, two creature, so it is just a bit better than an owl because it has one extra health. So you get three of those, and that is very good value for four costs. You're getting three uh, pretty bad creatures, but that you can use them as things you can sacrifice, you can use them as chump blockers, they can even get buffed when you use certain spells and put down like ancestral totems. So Rat King is the scroll that Growth uses to overwhelm the opponent with little creatures and then they make them come together and attack uh, much stronger. I only rank this uh, one ahead of Sister of the Owl because I think three one two two creatures for four costs is more cost effective than two one two one creatures and one two two four creature for six cost so they are both very good uh scrolls because you're getting three creatures for one scroll number five fertile soil is a four cost growth spell you sacrifice target creature you control and you draw three scrolls this scroll offers tremendous card advantage because all you have to do is kill one of your own uh, creatures and believe me growth has a lot of bad creatures you can sacrifice ranging from uh, owls, rats, sometimes even ragged wolves that have already used their haste so you definitely are going to have something to uh, sacrifice usually and you draw three scrolls so then your hand will be replenished and you'll be able to keep sacking for resources, you won't have to keep sacking for scrolls, and you'll be able to get up to those higher uh, higher cost um, spells. And this really helps uh, growth come back in games because they can uh, get more cards in their opponent and then overwhelm them. So this scroll is definitely a must have for growth decks. Number four. For 8 growth, God Hand is the single most expensive scroll in the game. It is a spell that combines the scrolls Rally and Crimson Bull, so it decreases all of the units on your side's countdown by 2, and they all gain plus 2 attack until the end of turn. So if you have a board full of like little rats, they're all going to attack and with plus 2 attack. So, regardless of the situation, if you have more than a few units on the board, God Hand will either help you clear your opponent's board or win you the game. Uh, this is usually the card that finishes most, uh, most growth games because you just play it and then you can just play it after and it's just, like I said, it's a Crimson Bowl and a Rally in one and it is very, very, very strong. Number three. Crimson Bull is a two cost growth spell that gives all of your units you control plus two attack until the end of your turn. So it is the plus two attack part of the god hand and it is very 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 good. The reason I put it right ahead of the god hand is because uh, for only two costs, that's a lot less than that eight cost, um, you can use it just to uh, make your ragged wolves have three attack or your uh, veterans have seven attack so I think it is um, much more common to play and it definitely can turn the tides of an early game with some ragged wolves and I just love this card I almost never sack it versus growth um, you might be a little surprised I ranked it this high but I think it is uh, one of the most valuable uh, growth scrolls Number two. The Kinfolk Veteran is amazing. It is a scroll for five costs. It is a three attack, two countdown, four health creature. And similar to the Ragged Wolf that uh, led off the countdown on number 10, this is a hasted creature, which means when it goes into the field, it starts with a zero countdown. So it will attack right away. And that is pretty amazing for a three attack creature. So for just five resources, 
you're basically putting three damage. It acts as sort of like a removal for any of uh, anything that's open, able to hit three damage on your opponent. And then after the haste, you get to keep a three two four creature, which is a um, pretty beefy creature. Good attack. Attacks every other turn. This is an amazing creature. You get to uh, kill one of your opponent's creatures usually, and then you get this own creature for yourself for uh, until it dies. So that's why this guy comes in at number two. And now we're on to number one. Number one. Haha, <laughs> Essence Fee sucks. The real number one. Ah, so number one is Quake. Who would have guessed? Quake single handedly uh, makes growth um, really destroy energy. Like, energy cannot beat growth because of this card. And it's pretty good against the other factions as well. Um, what it does is you play it, it costs six growth, and then every um, creature on the board gets dealt two damage, and every structure gets dealt three damage. So, cast one or two of these, like middle to late game, and you just kind of reset the board, and then growth can uh, put down its Rat Kings and Sister of the Owls to fill up the board faster than the opponent. After, during that whole time, it was Fertile Soiling to get card advantage, and then a God Hand or two uh, wins you the game against those idols. So Quake keeps growth in games, it wins at games, um, you can combine it in other decks with like uh, Frost Scales and Iron Biles to do even more damage, um, and it just, it really um, makes growth a lot more competitive than it would be without it. So that's Quake. These are some scrolls that just didn't cut my top 10, but they were very close. I was seriously considering them in this list, but I figured that the top 10 I showed was um, a little more valuable than these scrolls, but maybe they made your top 10. So that was my list. Did you like it? Leave a comment down below and tell me if you loved it or hated it and what you would change. This list was entirely derived from my own opinion, so no way is the ranking perfect. I used... Uh, all the pictures and stuff from uh, the Scrolls Guide wiki, so thank you for that. And um, so the ranking, definitely not perfect because it just comes from my own knowledge of the game. I'm creating the top 10 scrolls um, in the energy faction. I'm creating that video as you're watching this, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll, no so you'll be notified when that is released. And leave a like on this video to show me that you enjoyed it and want more videos like it. Now, I'm going to continue playing Scrolls to keep that number one ranking, so I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.